Today, looking at the Beast Grip DOF MK3. Now, before we get into it, no, the Beast Grip DOF is not for everyone. As a matter of fact, it's pretty niche. And yeah, okay, you can get a traditional camera for the same price, a used one anyway. But considering now with Apple Log and the 15 Pro, adding this DOF adapter is something that turns your phone into a really absolutely usable B camera and depending on what you're doing, a really good A camera. Now today what I'm doing is looking at test footage I shot. So this isn't any kind of fancy footage. It is footage I shot around my office and just surrounding areas in my neighborhood. And what I wanted to do was just analyze the new DOF adapter because this new one is designed for the latest generation phones because the previous one, the MK2, does not work well with the 14 or 15 series iPhones. You have to use diopters, but with the new one, you don't need to do that. So first up are some random interior shots here in my studio. This first shot I'm focused on the number 65 and it looks nice and sharp. And this next shot I'm focused on the mouse here on the right of the frame and it looks good too. Now, as I tilt up here on Grogu, you'll notice his left eye, our screen right, is sharp. But the opposite eye, the right eye, screen left, is not sharp. And that's because the depth of field is so shallow. Now, here's a good example showing there is actually a focus vignette. When I'm dolling across there, it looks like the bag is out of focus. But when I stop and it gets centered up, it's nice and sharp. Now I'm tilting up on these skateboards and this is another good example showing how shallow the depth of field is. The skateboard on the left, the wheels are sharp. The one on the right, it's only a couple inches away, but those are slightly out of focus. Now here's my solar generator and I'm actually focused on the far left power button. And so as I dolly across, that becomes the focal point and it's actually in focus. This shot's similar. When I'm dolling across, I reveal a microphone. However, I should note that this was shot with the two times zoom within the Blackmagic app, and it's a little bit soft. And so I don't know if I missed the focus or that zoom just softened the image a little bit too much. This next shot here of the bag, it's a cold bore bag, is the one shot where I think I did buzz the focus. I focused on the cold bore logo, and even when I stop, it looks a little bit soft. And my last shot here is similar to the moment lens earlier, but this is the DOF MK2. And when I come across, it looks soft, but then when it lands in the middle, it's nice and sharp. Now, one thing I wanted to do is show a couple of these shots without the color correction, so you see the Apple log, but mainly so you see the edge of the frame, because I did reframe each shot very subtly, only about two or 3%, because you will see the edge of the DOF adapter, but it's much improved. The previous version, you had to push in maybe 10 or 20% to get rid of it. And that's whether when you're shooting, you can push in while you're shooting, or you can do it in post-production. I always chose to do it in post, or most of the time I did. And again, you only have to push in two or three, or maybe 4% to get rid of the edge of the DOF, and it's much improved, much, much, much improved. Now we'll go outside and look at some wider shots in bright sunlight. Now shooting wider shots with a DOF adapter can be tricky, and here is a good example how you can see the vignette. And it's not a vignette like what you're used to seeing, like dark edges, it's a focus vignette. If you look at the very middle, I am focused on the light on the fence, and that is sharp, and then the trees right behind it are sharp. But as it goes out to the edges, it gets softer, softer meaning the depth of field, the focus changes. It's not that it's out of focus, it's just that's the way the DOF adapter works. And so I'm about 20 or 30 feet from that fence and I'm using a 50 millimeter lens. And by the way, that's what they recommend doing is using a longer lens, a telephoto lens. Wider lenses, you would see more of the actual DOF adapter. So just something to keep in mind, it's a cool look. It's just not the way a traditional camera would act. And kind of the same with this shot, I am dollying across these trees and those are definitely out of focus, but even the background is a little bit soft until I land on this spot. And that limb right there in the middle is where I had focused the lens. And so that is nice and sharp, but the edges fall off. And similar here too, I'm dollying off the house and you see the pool and I'm focused on the hot tub and that's sharp. But if you look in the distance, the trees on the upper left and on the right side and then the fence is out of focus. It's a depth of field look. But on a traditional camera, that would tend to be in focus. 
And one last shot here of my shed, and I'm actually focused on the porch light. And you can see nice shallow depth of field in the distance, and then on the left side, the building's out of focus. And so you can create some really cool looks with the DOF adapter. The only thing though, and this has nothing to do with the DOF adapter, this has to do with the app I'm using, which was the Blackmagic app. I had a heck of a time getting focus peaking to show up. More times than not, I couldn't see it, even though it was on. I'm not sure exactly why, but what I ended up doing was using the zoom feature in the app to help with my focus. So the first thing I'll do is focus the lens, and then I'll touch the screen, but peaking, doesn't work right or it's very hard to see so i'll lock what i just did again in the app and now i'm going to use this telephoto i've been using the four times to go in and fine tune the focus and then i hit one times going back out close that up and now i'm ready to shoot Overall, the new DOF adapter, I really believe is much improved over the MK2. The main thing is you don't have to worry about reframing the shot as much, either in production or in post-production. It's much more user-friendly in that regard. So again, the DOF is not for everyone, that is for sure. But if you're wanting to get shallow depth of field with a small sensor phone, and again, now using Apple Log, it's a pretty cool option and really could come in handy for doing B-roll or interviews and that kind of thing, it could really add some nice production value. Or if you're an indie filmmaker and your phone is the only thing you have, then spending a couple hundred dollars, maybe it's like 300 to add to your phone, then, you know, it could be a good option for that too. In my opinion, it doesn't replace a traditional camera, not at all, but it is an interesting accessory and option for those of you that want to get that shallow DOF look on your phone.